Hello and welcome to Simplify Your Life. My name is Janet Taylor. I am your presenter today. I am excited to be here and I see everyone is just saying good morning to everyone. But before I get started, I'm going to bring on Mr. Chris Rowe. so much, Janet. And welcome everyone, as Janet mentioned, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I just want to provide a couple of quick reminders before we get started. Um, you can see the chat. There are plenty of people here. You won't see other participants listed anywhere. So do want to point out you're definitely not the only one, as you can see in chat. We do have lots of attendees and we're excited to have you all join us. Um, one thing I want to point out is if you would like the slides from today's session or the link to today's recording when it is available, um, email partners.wellness at tn.gov. Um, we will put that email address in the chat now. Um, so please don't request the slides or the recording link in the chat, but be sure to email again partners.wellness at tn.gov if you would like those to be sent to you. Um, and with that, Janet, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Chris. I am excited to be here because I see people not only saying good morning, but they're saying happy Valentine's Day too as well. So again, we are here for how to simplify your life. My name is Janet Taylor, and I have been helping people simplify their lives for over 20 years. I would love to know what specific area you want to simplify. Is it your office? your workspace? Is it home? Is it time? Is it life? Please share it in the chat. And of course, this presentation is being recorded. And again, please feel free to pop things in the chat. Now, if you only want me to see your question or your comment, please send it to me directly and I will only share your question and your comment and not your um, identity as well. And I see some people saying home, time, finances, home, life, work-life balance, everything. So hopefully I'll be able to answer some of those questions to you. Work life as a mother, public health educator, and wife, new baby on the way. Oh, congrats. So today we're going to look at the big picture because I think when you think about simplifying your life, the first thing you need to do is really kind of really kind of have a vision of that. So that's what we're going to talk about today is really what that vision is, because once you figure out what the vision is, then you can figure out what the things you just need to get rid of. Then, of course, again, we're going to look at our values as well as our beliefs, because that plays a big part in simplifying our lives. And of course, sometimes those inner pressures, we're going to talk about those. But one of the things that, of course, I always get excited about is always excited about the getting rid of the clutter, because I'm sure a lot of you have probably already started that. And maybe you're going to be waiting till the spring and that's fine. But we're going to talk about the excuses as well as some tips on decluttering. But also, we're going to talk about chores and commitments because sometimes our calendars and our schedules can be as full as our closets and those junk drawers. Yes, I said junk drawers, but I'm sure nobody here has a junk drawer. And of course, just looking at your relationships because sometimes, you know, there are things that you want to do. And even it might be just kind of having a do nothing day, but then sometimes you have those supportive relationships and we love them, but they just want to be constantly busy. And of course, just creating a plan. And that's really what today's session is about. It's about looking at all the things, thinking about it, but then really sitting down, whether it's this week or whether it's by the end of this month to create a plan. Or someone is saying, yes, a lot of clutter. And somebody says, relationship junk drawer. It's just one junk drawer. Well, some people have one. Some people have many. And I understand. Oh, somebody said, home office is too crowded. Does the sauce packet drawer count as a junk drawer? Well, it depends. It depends. That just might be the sauce packet drawer. And that's okay. And of course, just how to make a plan. And then we're going to talk about, of course, you know, just some closing tips and strategies as well. Not if the sauces are organized. That is true. That is true. Oh, I'm loving this group. This group is lively. Again, values, beliefs, 
identifying how we can declutter. And I'm going to give you a few tips and, and, and statistics as well. And hopefully that may encourage you to get rid of some things, but also streamlining your chores and commitments. I'm going to give you hopefully a couple of things about planning that can help you as well. Well, if they're expired, then maybe it's time to get rid of things and discuss the importance of those supportive relationships, but also most importantly, at the end of this session, just writing down an action plan, because once you have an action plan, then you can fi figure out, okay, this is the area I need to simplify, whether it's like somebody said finances, maybe it's things in your time, maybe it is the things in your home, or even just looking at your office. Um, uh, someone says, I got to go work on mine. Couldn't get the silverware tray back in there last night. Yes, that's right. You have to have those that, that those utensils accessible. So let's look at the big picture. So everybody just look at what your big picture is. What And when you think about simplifying your life, what does it look like? Does it look like maybe did you, you know, you're looking at how you're spending your time in regards to your values and your beliefs, maybe you want to clear things out of your calendar so that you can, you know, donate your time. Or maybe it is looking at your resources. What are some of the things you want to do with your resources? You know, some people want to take, a, you know, those big vacations several times a year. So in order to do that, what do you need to do? How do you need to simplify? Or even sometimes just, you know, in regards to do you want to go back to school? Is that part of, you know, I really want to do that. And simplifying your life is really looking at a vision you have for your life. It's not always just kind of thinking about what can I get rid of, but it's really sometimes making room for what you want. Maybe you do want to go back to school. Maybe you do want to learn a new language or Maybe you do want to actually, you know, give of your time and your talent to things. So streamlining process, less time to do anything. And sometimes streamlining is meaning making sure, yes, you're not spending your time doing a lot of things and you're spending more time maybe just really kind of being still. And sometimes, you know, like someone shared, they were, you know, wife, they've got the job, they've got the new baby on the way. And sometimes, you know, streamlining your life means that I need to make sure that over the next several years that I'm really focused on being, you know, that wife and that mom for the new baby. So just kind of think about that as well. Because sometimes when people think of streamlining, they think, Jan, I got to get rid of everything. You know, it's just kind of tweaking how your life already exists. Somebody said, get rid of old clothes, furniture, update how, let go of stuff, just plain stuff. And sometimes, yes, it's about the stuff. And we're going to get to that just in a few. So also, it's looking at your values and your beliefs. Now, as you can see from this picture, the values and beliefs, he just wants to, this person just wants to, you know, spread some love to the children. And maybe that's part of your values and your beliefs. Like what really matters to you? Some people, it's spending time possibly with children. Maybe your values and beliefs is like, you know, Janet, I'm at a point in my life where I really want to learn more of the skill set that I have and the job and the career that I have. Or it could be, you know what, I really feel like this is a time in my life when the kids are young and I need to really start looking at my finances because before you know it, we've got the proms, we got the graduations, we got the college tuition, we got this thing. So it's really looking at what really matters to you. I read the other day that we only wear 20% of our clothes in our closet. I need to get rid of a lot. And you know, that's true. That's true. Add more hours to a 24 hour day. See, I have, a, a okay, I'm going to finish this slide and I want to really kind of touch um, on those two things. How am I spending my time? So somebody said add 24 hours in my day. And really, if we sometimes just sit down, even just daily, sometimes weekly, and really look at what we're doing with our time, we can find time to do the things. But sometimes we have to learn how to say, this is a priority for me right now, and this is not. For example, there are a lot of people who are part of that sandwich generation. And so 
right now their values and their beliefs are, you know, I have a two year old, but I'm also taking care of an elderly relative. So that so whatever doesn't fit in that, I need to kind of simplify my life so that I can have those two as a priority in regards to spending, you know, my time. But also sometimes it's looking at our time and figuring out what are my priorities and how I can get things done without getting overwhelmed. And no, because sometimes if we got more time, then we would just try to put more stuff in there. Sort of like when you get a bigger house, you find put more stuff because I got more closets and I got more storage space. And of course, how does this align with my life goals? And as I share, there are people, and there may be some here today, who feel, you know what? I want to take care of my relatives or family members, et cetera. That's something I want to do. So therefore, you work your time, your life, your resources, and there may be things that you need to simplify so you can do that. So again, ask yourself, what really matters to you? How am I spending my time? And how does this align with my life goals? So, and I just, before I move on, I just want to share an example. There was a couple who... What really mattered to them was they wanted to be able to send their daughter to college debt free. And I'm happy to say they did that five years. How are, am I spending my time? They knew how they were going to have to spend their time for at least a five year period. That meant overtime here, there. It, I, and I even asked them, I said, did you two see each other doing this whole five year? Because every time I turned around, you know, the husband was doing overtime. The wife was taking in overtime. Because that aligned with one of their life goals as a couple. So sometimes it's just looking at that. Your self-care focus on me more. And sometimes we have to do that in regards to, because that's part of the life goals. The life goal is, you know, I want to have a healthy life. Well, if that's part of your life goal, then of course, taking care of you is very, very important. So how is everybody? You know, I always do that. I do that in my sessions because you can see me. I can't see you. So I just want to know. You can give me thumbs up. Say, Janet, I'm still here. I'm listening. I'm writing down. But I just like to just know. I just like to take a pulse and see how you're doing. So let's look at our inner beliefs and our inner pressures. Oh, good. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Thank you so much. Oh, great today. Hello. Doing good. Thumbs up. Good talk. Okay, I'm here. Are you attending to your own needs and wants? Or has it become, because sometimes things become a tradition. You know, I personally need to focus on, well, I have family of six, so I'm doing something for everybody all day. Yeah, just a little bit of time for yourself. Note taking and evaluating my life. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Somebody said they're paying attention. Thank you. Stress moving to stressed, moving to anxiety. Hopefully by the end of this session, you won't be feeling like that. But so for example, let's, let's just, just take up the holidays, for example. Now, maybe you're at a place in your life where, yes, you want to spend time with family and friends, holidays, different functions, et cetera. But you also know that it's important for you to rest. And Okay, I don't like that hanging by a thread. Okay, we got to we got to figure that one out, and 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 hopefully by the end I'll, I'm gonna think of some few strategies for you to not hang by a thread. So therefore, we feel the obligations. We feel the obligations to attend all the family functions and everything, even though we're exhausted. So it's really, are you attending to your own needs? And I'm not saying no, don't go, because someone shared with me. She said. Sometimes the list of holiday functions gets so overwhelming by the time I really don't get to enjoy the holiday season. And by the time it's over, I'm exhausted. So what she started doing is she actually started just maybe spending two hours here, an hour there. She said that way I got to see everyone, but I didn't, you know, overwhelm myself and burn myself out because I had to travel here. She said, because I am the only one who is in the state. So therefore I have to travel out of state in order to visit everyone. So sometimes it's just looking at that as well. Our, um, you know, the beliefs and the pressures. The pressure is, well, we want you at every function because we love you, yes. But also it's just kind of figuring out what works for you. Um, 
to be available and helpful to others. I learned long ago, it is important to be available for yourself first. Thank you so much. I'm working, working, working all the time. And most times I'm tired. Then there's today. Oh, oh, it's my wedding anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. So the clutter. Now, if someone shared 20% of the stuff we keep, we never no, 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Again, 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. So, are you spending time, you know, maintaining stuff that may... I probably wear 5% because I go nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, you know, I might be in that same category. I had never thought about the 5% rule. Um, um, so, but, you know, are you spending time dealing with the stuff instead of doing something that is important to you? Sometimes. Does it take up your time and your energy dusting and repairing? Does it take up your space to store? And are you spending money on storage on things that are out of sight and out of mind, but you just keep paying a bill every month? And instead of maybe spending your time on the stuff, what about spending the time on you? So think about those. So what's your excuse? Someone saying I have too much stuff, gave away a lot of clothes, Okay, to the, to the disaster victim, that's wonderful. My husband and I pulled clothes out of our closet this week because we are having t-shirt quilts made for each other. Oh, that's exciting. I got started on my task and often stopped before finishing. Okay, I want to talk about the excuses, but I know a lot of people feel that way. You go, you get started, you, you wake up, you're energized, you start pulling stuff out of closets, drawers, cabinets garages and sometimes first I always suggest to people is just plan out what you need to do if you decide to do a closet a garage etc but also limit yourself maybe just start with just getting rid of things that you no longer can be trash can be recycled that's just maybe a couple of hours doing that then you schedule another couple of hours getting rid of things you know you can donate and then what's left is actually what you organize. So you don't overwhelm yourself because that can be overwhelming because you, you start in front of you pulling things out. The closet is clear. The cabinets are clear. But then you turn around and it's that pile you need to deal with. So think about that. But your excuse, I have a list of different organizational projects and I'm working down at that. Congrats. I'm giving you a hand clap for that one. Hunt clothes, hang clothes in your closets backwards. And if you don't turn it around by wearing it in a year, get rid of it. I'm reading this, but yes, that is a really good way of just trying to figure out, am I wearing stuff? Yes, so just take it, you know, hang it backwards. If you wear it, hang it the way you normally do. And then whether you want to wait at the end of a quarter, at the end of six months, or at the end of the year, and just really figure out what you're wearing. So that's a good one. But what is your excuse? Now, I'm going to name a few excuses. And if that excuse kind of resonates with you, you can say, oh, that's me. Or you can just maybe put your own in there. I might need it someday. You know, there's things in our homes and our lives. You know, maybe we don't need it today. But you're thinking, you know what, down the line. Oh, somebody said that's me. And then, of course, sometimes, well, not as much as in the past, but, you know, you cut out articles. But now, you know, our devices, because we save, oh, I got to get back to that article. Oh, somebody said, me too. My list includes the closets, the garage, the pantry, the laundry room, sentimental. Yes, yeah, sentimental attachments are a struggle. Um, and someone said, gift that to someone. Somebody can say, gift things. But what about... And what about it'll come back in style? Now, how many of you have said it's going to come back in style? And when it does, I'm going to already have it. <laughs> somebody said I have and somebody said me. Of course, it's a gift. And a lot of times we have things that, you know, may not even belong to us. But 
because the person may not longer be living under the roof, you just don't want to throw it out. Give them a timeline. Um, somebody said, Huffy and I have already started thinking about organizing. We have a new storage shelves to put together this weekend. Oh, that sounds exciting. See, that's the kind of stuff that excites me. See, because my friends, they know. Don't even take me past an Ikea or the container store because, you know, I'm going to go up and down the aisles. That's just a little sidebar thing I had shown. They don't make things like this anymore, and that is true sometimes. But look at how much it's going to cost you to get things prepared. Um, and, of course, I can use it crafting. Somebody's just sharing that. Ah, see, is it? Or, you know, it brings back memories. And that's like really more of the sentimental stuff. And with the sentimental stuff, I can understand. But just, you know, if you're not ready to get rid of this year, maybe in six months, maybe in another year, but don't really force yourself to actually, because a lot of times that can bring up a lot of different emotions, et cetera. And at the end, I'll tell you something that, and remind me, I'll tell you something that I recently got rid of a long time ago, but I'll, I'll share that with you later. But so let's talk about some ways we can all declutter. First of all, we have to stop the procrastination. And the procrastination really comes because it's almost like procrastination and perfectionism because you cannot get it the way you want it. Or sometimes it's just overwhelming. But as I shared, you know, just start by just getting rid of things. And then maybe another session you go in and you get rid of the things you need to donate. For example, maybe there's a tricycle in the corner that's collecting dust. And of course, your youngest you know, actually rode the bicycle. So there's there's some sentimental, but your youngest actually is on their second car. So maybe it's time for you to let it go. So want to stop that. But also we talked about the excuses. Now excuses in regards sometimes I hear is about time. And really you can, 15 minutes can do wonders, maybe even an hour. If you took an hour a week and just focused on organizing, then that would just basically, you know, be 52 hours within a year. So, you know, 15 minutes here and there, you know, 15 minutes, I'm going to focus 15 minutes on this drawer. I'm going I'm to, you know, get rid of the, the sauce packets that have expired and just kind of organize the ones. I, I saw a show that said, ask yourself, do I need this today or tomorrow? If not, let it go. And also when organizing, everything has a place. And if it doesn't, get rid of it. And someone, I like to set a timer with Alexa and then get to work on a project. That is wonderful. Yes, yes, shorter periods are less daunting. And also when you just focus on something, just focus on a shelf, just focus on a drawer, focus on a box, focus on a container. Uh, so if you, you, you use it or you lose it, you use it or just lose it. Really, it's like letting it go as well. Trying to read things once, mail, accept, email, yes. And also in regards to if you do receive mail, one of the things you can do is you can have like whether you want to put it in a shredding, you know, bin or recycle, you know, specifically those, those circulars. They can go in recycling. But of course, just have a shredding bin. And someone shared with me that she has like a little shredding basket. And then when it gets to a certain point, because her daughter's at an age where she can actually shred. So sometimes it's just doing that as well. And also, you know, learning just to really kind of let go of things, um, you know, and maybe a lot of you live in communities where you can actually just kind of put things outside, put a sign on it and allow it to go to a new home. And I think that's sometimes just that mindset that we have to have. I'm going to allow it to go to a new home because right now it's just collecting dust in my home. Also. In regards to limit, you definitely want to set limits on the stuff that is in your home. Now, for example, I know a lot of you here may be, you know, you might have se several different types of tools and craft tools and maybe artist tools, and each of them do different things. And I understand that. But when you have the same and the similar things. For example, you have five of the exact same scissors. Now I understand, depending on square footage, you may have a pair upstairs, you may have a pair downstairs, 
And you may have a pair in the, 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 the garage or the shed. But do you need five things? So sometimes just limiting, but also limiting the amount of things you bring in because then you're thinking about the space you have. Because sometimes when we decide that we want to continue to keep everything, it's like, and the easiest solution is to get the outside storage. Now, for sometimes, that's me with the scissors. I bought a pack of three. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe you needed those pack of three. But just think about that. Think about how much you really truly need. And of course, have, you know, have like an inventory system. An inventory system could be if something comes in, something's got to go out. That's, you know, that's it. I have a friend that if one new thing comes in to the house, three have to leave. I like that. Three. And it is, and sometimes it is easier said than done. But just begin to really visualize. You're here because you want to live a simple life. And a simple life means that, you know, thing, it is a place for everything and everything in its place. And also, you are not overwhelmed. You actually, when you open up that door to the, the coat closet, the entryway closet, you know, you can hang it up. It's not, you know, things aren't like all bunched up together. You know, you open up a pantry. You can see what you have. So that's what it, it really is. And yes, it's a practice. It's, it's, it's something that you have to kind of discipline yourself. It's sort of like when you take something out, you put it back. That's a discipline. And then, of course, you know, always just knowing, you know, really less is more. It's okay. I went through my craft room and collected all the supplies that I don't need or have a plan for and donated 10 black garbage bags of craft supplies to the local Boys and Girls Club. Oh, my goodness. And somebody else said, I'm striving to be a minimalist. If it's something like clothes, I'll try to replace another item. Haven't gotten there with the books, though. But I do get rid of ones I don't like. And that is true. That is true. And even with the books, and some and, and, and let me know if this is in your community. Some communities have what they call as those little libraries. It almost looks like a little birdhouse where you can actually put your books in. When you, once you re, re, finish reading them, you can put your books in. And then, of course, other people, you know, you might see a book you want. And you don't have to. But it's a nice little. We have book boxes and a food pantry box. I love food pantry boxes because food pantry boxes allow you to donate food that you at one point you thought you know what we're gonna we were gonna eat this food but we're really not going to eat it and it's not expired and also it's good also and this is a little side thing when you have those sheets and those pillows you know the the uh what do you call animal shelters love them because they line the cages so the well, so the animals are not on those clothes on those cold cages i love food boxes too and also, sometimes it's just a compromise. And what that talks about is that perfectionism. Because sometimes you, you, you look at social media, Pinterest, you know, TV, and you're thinking, oh, I want the slim hangers. I want the cute little containers all nicely labeled. And really, it's about, and this is something I always suggest, is you purge. Because I shared 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. And we were 20% of our clothes, 80% 80, um, 80 of the time, is you purge first. Purge and let go of things. And then once you purge and you donate and you get rid of, you cycle, then you just really have what's left. And then if you decide you want to actually go out and get the cute little hangers, but sometimes it's using what you what you already have. And yes, I know sometimes you do. You see the label containers. Do you know, I know people who are organizers. They will just rip tape, label it. And, and, and it's about being able to find things the first time you look. Because a lot of times people think organization is about neatness. And it's really it's about finding things the first time you look, because I'm sure all of you here know somebody who you thought, okay, I thought they were a little bit organized, but when you ask them for something, they can put their hands on it within a second. So that is what it's out. But before you buy something, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is this going to simplify my life? 
Is this going to simplify my life and does it fit with my goals? So is it going to simplify and does it fit with my goal? If it takes more than one session to clutter, set a time each day you will work on it for an hour each time. For example, when you do it the same time every day, it's easy to stick to it and accomplish your goal. So, so true. And somebody said Dollar Tree is your best friend when decluttering and organizing. The bins are amazing. And mindset to adopt less stuff and more life. And donate books to your library. Perhaps they can put them in their sales so they can purchase things they need for the library. Thank you so much. So, of course, it's that little time where I just like to know how is everybody doing? Is everybody okay? Any questions, any comments? I do see a hand raised. Now, if you would like, you can send me a message privately. So please let me, you know, you can, if you, because I see somebody's hand raised. So please let me respond to your question or comment. And if you want, you can just send me something privately as well. So thank you so much. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I know that, that's the first time I got the little flame emoji. Oh, and somebody said, I like the luggage idea. Just glad I am not alone. And yes, and a lot of times people feel that they are alone, but people are working. People are raising a family, taking care of family, going to school. This day. And sometimes that is a project that they know needs to be done, but sometimes you just get overwhelmed and you just don't know where to start. So enjoying this very much, especially all. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I truly believe Everybody can be organized again, whether you spend 15 minutes every now and then, whether you schedule some time once a week. So wonderful. These are our conversations, very motivating, wonderful, wonderful. And that is what I am glad to hear. So let's talk about the streamlining your chores. Now, of course, a lot of you probably, how would someone simplify the mind? So someone can focus on what matters. So basically, that would really mean where you would just, if you really want to simplify your mind, it's one. Oh, so delegate the kids. It's first of all, maybe just scheduling time, whether it's an hour this coming weekend or whenever you can with a journal and really just kind of getting everything out. I recently saw a flip chart of someone who did that because they're working on a lot of different projects and they just basically had um actually it was the person she invited her mother over her house and she just basically just shared all the things that were in her head and then from there they organized what needed to be done what was the so sometimes that can help so you know just getting it and just getting them out and just maybe let and not worrying about if it's all organized and everything, just get it out. And then once you have everything out, then you can kind of figure out. So hopefully that that helps you as well. I make a list to check off progress and tasks done. And this is something that I so desire to become. This is my new year resolution. And just do a little bit at a time. Sometimes getting organized is really could be just whenever you take something out, you just put it back. I mean, think about it. Just pause for a moment and think about when you take a, there's a pencil out of a pencil cup, something out of a drawer, something out of a closet, and you put it back. That's, that's one less thing that's on a surface, that's on a chair, et cetera. Oh, yes, this meeting, I am sorry if I did not make that announcement in the beginning. Yes, this presentation is being recorded. And somebody asked me about vision boards. Vision boards are wonderful because that really kind of helps you focus sometimes on what you need to do. And also in regards to vision boards, while it's on my mind, we a lot of times you start a new year with a resolution with goals and what i'm learning and this may be helpful for you is that with those 
see what you can do every 30 days. Don't necessarily, because what happens is at the end of the year, you realize you haven't done anything, you haven't gotten started, and sometimes people panic, they get anxious, overwhelmed, because they're trying to spend the last two weeks of the year, you know, working on a goal. So really, when you look at your goal, like, okay, I'm looking at this goal, and I'm going to break it down to maybe 30 days. What can I do in 30 days to reach this and check this off of my list? Or if you want to break it down to quarters, however. So take that big goal and break it down. And vision boards really help you just kind of stay focused and see. You know, maybe you've decided you want to run, you know, simplifying your life is because you want to simplify your life and your schedule and your chores and your commitments. So you want to run a marathon. So maybe you might have a picture of somebody crossing the finish line. Or, you know, like I shared earlier, like the couple. They wanted to make sure that their daughter graduated. So that was kind of like on their vision board, you know, just, a, you know, her little picture, you know, graduated. Um, someone said, this is how I was in 2020. My resolution was clutter free in 23. Then that's OK, because you can see you can you can be clutter free in 24. I mean, granted, it doesn't kind of have the same, you know zing to it but you can be and just kind of list like what is it you want to do what areas will work on okay maybe it's the closet okay maybe january february well february is january is gone so february march i'm gonna work on the closet and then maybe work on the garage because i saw some of you had the garage and depending on where you're located you may want to save that for a spring or fall project you don't necessarily want to do it in the winter or the summer Ah, uh, thank you so much. Get rid of more in 24 or buy no more in 24. Thank you so much. See, that's why I love this group. I completed my first vision board two weeks ago. Congrats to you. Yes, yes. And streamlining those chores because I know so many of you probably started, you know, figuring, if, you know, because a lot of us, you know, we were not able to go to the grocery store a couple of years ago, but now, you know, you've gotten into a habit and it does, it makes it a lot easier, just kind of just basically, you know, ordering online and having it delivered to your door or ordering it, going by and picking it up. But also sometimes we can streamline when somebody was talking about wanting more, wanting 24 more hours in a day, sometimes it's streamlining those chores because a lot of people grew up where parents did everything on a Saturday. You know, they did the, the washing and the cleaning and the grocery shopping. But then as they became adults, they decided, you know what, I want to do something different. So therefore, and also, yes, make the kids chip in, chip in. Yes, yes, the kids can chip in. But now they're realizing, you know what, I'm going to, you know, schedule. And that's one of the things is sitting down with your, you know, either with all the members of the family or either with yourself, because Jana has a planning session with us, myself. And I basically sit down. Each week is going to be different. Each week is going to be different when I do the laundry. Or when I, you know, and I still do grocery shopping or, um, and I just do that just because I like the interaction with my neighbors or, you know, when I do cleaning, I don't necessarily do cleaning all in one day. I break it up. But in regards to cleaning, some people are finding that it is cost effective to have someone come in. One of the women, um, she spoke to me and part of simplifying her life was really simplifying her schedule and her commitments because she was not only has a a 10 year old but she's also taking care of her father so therefore she wanted to make sure that her time was spent on the two men in her life and not on the cleaning and all of that so you know sometimes it's doing that someone else was just getting overwhelmed stressed and over the fact that because of her work schedule that she was not able to stay on top of her laundry. But then she said, I'm driving home and there was a sign. And she said, I went in and I talked and I found out that there was they, they would do my laundry and it was in budget. So now that's less stressful. So sometimes it's looking at that as well. And of course, getting the kids involved. Someone shared that how their son, when they were three, he would just go around and just kind of tie up the um, wastebasket uh, trash bags, but now because he drives, he can because they have to take their their trash, you know, to a facility. He can do that. 
But someone said, I have a small chalkboard built in the end of my cabinets and I list the chores during the week. And as I complete them, I cross them off. My friend uses only four recipes a week to rotate. It helps with cost. Yes, food planning is fabulous. How many of you food planners are uh, food, you know, food prep, food planners, weekly planners, vision board, gather pictures, quotes, stickers, etc. Match your goals and then arrange them. Someone said yes, somebody said hello fresh. And there's so many different things. And 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 that's another way to really kind of streamline it sure because then well, it's a couple of things. One, you eat healthier when you do your, your food prep, but also it's less of the time it takes when you come home and realize there is nothing. Everything is frozen. So I tried food prep once and it was a disaster. We really struggle with commitment to planned meals. And sometimes it's either depending on budgets is either you know actually you know there's so many different meal services but also sometimes it's just kind of you know just sitting down and just having it in the schedule and that's part of the simplified life as well is really streamlining that schedule so that you don't feel like you're overwhelmed you know you have to do your work hours but also making sure those other things to maintain your house are in there or unless you you know use outside service and then of course also making sure you have time for yourself we struggle with commitment we buy and waste yes so yeah and then also sometimes you know i think a lot of times we feel we have to buy in bulk but we don't necessarily have to buy in bulk not if you feel that you're going to waste sometimes buy smaller portions you know i personally you know came up in a world where you know and, and that's talking about the, the outside pressures it's like well janet you always got to buy your your your, your um, paper towels in bulk but then it got to a point where I live in a small space. I don't have room for all of those rolls of toilet paper. So now I just buy the nice little small six. Six fits perfectly in my closet and I'm fine. Um, I use Green Chef and Blue Apron. There's so many different. I took a picture of my vision board. Okay. Somebody said, and is it part of their screensaver? Yeah, and sometimes we have all of these devices. So sometimes whatever the vision is of having a simple life, we need to kind of just kind of keep it in front of us. Um, I have I have to take time to plan our meals for the week before I go to the grocery store. Then we know what meals we're going to do for the week. And I have a couple of nights for leftovers. I love leftovers. And then the same thing, we're talking about chores, but also commitments. Because when you really begin to look at the vision for your life and then how you need to spend your time, then that helps you to be able to say, you know, this week I've got two projects to help the children with. You know, I'm working late. I also have to study for, for school and, you know, whatever. So then therefore, unfortunately, this time I'm not going to be able to make the event, but please, Make sure you keep me on your list for your next one. Yes, I, somebody has a weekly um, uh, uh, menu on the ridge, I mean on the fridge, sorry. And yes, as mentioned, this presentation is going to be recorded so you will also um, get uh, all those slides. Oh my goodness, some of you are some meal preppers out there. Uh, somebody said recently I realized that I get in bulk and don't have any more. Um, I grew up in a world where things were not readily available, but things are always available now. And thank you for sharing that because someone said they purchased a juice because, yes, that was a conversation I had with someone years ago about how where they grew up, there wasn't a lot. And then when they came here, they were just buying things. And then finally, the children had to say, okay. You know, everything's okay. You don't have to buy like you used to because things are available. Things are available. So, the last portion is the relationships and making sure you have supportive relationships. How do you find out how many subscriptions you have? I wanted to do a money rocket, but it costs. Hmm, maybe somebody here has a, a solution to that. But the example I wanted to give you about supportive relationships is there was a, years ago, there were a group of 
of women who decided for six months, I hope nobody falls off a chair when I say this, for six months decided they were not going to spend any money on anything that was not related to a living expense. So I'll explain to you what Money Rocket is. Um, but yes, they decided, they came together as a group. That was a supportive relationship. Six months. But also, each one of those women had a goal. Somebody wanted to put more money into retirement. Somebody wanted to put money aside for renovation. Somebody wanted to put money aside to go to school. Somebody wanted to put money aside so they could actually pay down on a debt. And that was a support. So they supported each other. And of course, you know, of course, during those six months, all of a sudden somebody had a formal to go to. So they put out to the group, okay, I'm this size. Does anybody have something? Because, you know, I don't want to wear anything in my closet. Someone else they went to a costume party. She said, I need some pearls. Um, but they supported each other through this journey. And that's what sometimes we need when we are simplifying our lives, even simplifying our schedules. You know, someone shared that she had a friend who actually always liked to go window shopping. She said, I'm trying to save money. She says, so therefore, I just found other things for us to do. We no longer kind of met, you know, just to go uh, uh, window shopping or going in and out malls. We basically have another activity. So who do I spend my time with? Who do I make friends with? And do I allow them to be, you know, dragged down? And also sometimes you are so excited because my goodness, you decided, you know what, I'm going to do a 10K. So you want to surround yourself with people who are going to move you forward, who are going to move you forward and motivate you as you simplify your life so that when you decide, all of a sudden you say, well, wait a minute, somebody's got a sale. A supportive friend will say, yes, they've got a sale, but do you need it? Do you need it? Because you probably got at least two or three in your household. Someone says, I have an Excel spreadsheet to track household income and spending. Spouse is supportive of gold. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, someone has said, uh, creating a spending plan allocates where everything goes. And that is true. Whether you do a spreadsheet, rocket money is really a way that a lot of people help really kind of see where their money is going. And that's how a lot of people are figuring out all the subscriptions. But sometimes, like somebody shared, you could just create a spreadsheet and really track your expenses. Like sit down monthly and just see where all your money is going and then decide what do you need to keep, what you need to get rid of. Um, because uh, someone shared that they were paying for a service, but because of the cell phone carrier they had, they actually were given the service for a year free. So it's just finding and discovering things like that. Zero budgeting is wonderful because that tells you where every single dollar goes. Yeah, zero dollar budget. Um, that's from, you know, Ramsey. And someone said, I use Rocket Money and it helped for me to set up my budget and bills. I like it and it tells me where everything is going. And of course, we all would love to know just how much money we are spending, specifically sometimes just on the food bill. So, um, and of course, write down all your subscriptions. Yes, definitely, definitely write them all down. That is so important because, you know, sometimes you just kind of, sometimes you might be even overlapping, overlapping on all of those things as well. So thank you so much for all the wonderful things you are putting in the chat. Any questions, any comments, please let me know. I would like to know. So there's a couple of things before I get into this slide. But I would like to know, one, do you have a takeaway from today's presentation? I would love for you to just put it in the chat. We are going to have a Q&A in a few minutes, but I just wanted to kind of follow up with a few things. One, 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. And a couple of time management things. Number one, if you just take 15 minutes of pre-planning, you save yourself an hour the next day. So that could be just knowing where your shoes are, knowing where the keys are. But also, if you take an hour in planning, and that's like really talking about simplifying your life, making sure you, that hour can save you three to four in execution. And the last tip, is that whatever you decide to do, if you think something's going to take you 15 minutes, 
make sure you double that time. Because how many times if you said it's only going to take you 15 and you're frustrated because it takes you 20, 25. So do that. So again, this is brought to you by Optum. Your, of course, your EAP. They offer free counseling support for all eligible employees as well as family members. It's easily accessible, voluntary, confidential in accordance with the law. And it's a service that can provide support for both personal as well as work-related issues. And it is staffed by professionals. And I'm loving all of the stuff you're putting in the chat. And of course, they provide, like you may not be able to sleep at night, performance issues, relationship issues. Of course, maybe you just have hobbies that you're no longer interested in. You know, everyday cares, you just don't, you know, really have any energy for them. You may be, you know, of course, have anxiety and worries, or you just may be feeling overwhelmed and, and for over several weeks, and that's not good. And of course, if it's impacting your appetite, making sure you reach out to them as well. So I am going to now bring, I'm going to, of course, take this off of mute, but I am now going to off of mute. You know, I'm just, I'm just excited because all of you are here. I meant I'm going to uh, bring on Chris again, and I'm just kind of looking for Chris because there's so many of you here today. Let's see, let's do that. Ah, uh, here we go. And I see Chris. And Chris, I'm taking you off from mute now. I'd like to take a quick moment to touch on the resources available through Here for TN. As a reminder, Here for TN is the brand name for your behavioral health, emotional well being solutions, and work life programs, all powered by Optum. All state of Tennessee employees have access to a dedicated clinical team, and all you have to do is call 1 855 Here for TN to get connected with them. The team is available for unlimited consultations, referrals, and advocacy for you and your needs. Uh, benefit eligible employees and dependents have access to five free emotional well being solutions visits per issue, per person, per year. They can also do a provider search for you based on your preferences to help you find a provider with appointment availability. HereForTN.com contains benefit information, including digital resources such as the self-care app by Able To, the Take Charge at Work program, and legal and financial resources. Visit HereForTN.com or call 1-855-HEREFORTN with any questions or if you're in need of any help. 